Y esta es una de estas historias locas que voy a tratar de resumir eh, y ya iremos eh, compartiendo más. Um, Todos se acuerdan que en, que en uh, abril, mayo, en abril, mayo de 2023, me invitaron a un, a un retiro de ayahuasca cuatro días seguidos. Y en ese, en ese encuentro conocí a muchas personas, de las cuales van a surgir muchísimas informaciones, pero una de eh, las personas que conocí fue Navin, eh, es, eh, en, de aquí, de los Estados Unidos, eh, pero de descendencia de la India, um, con quien conectamos mucho por una historia relacionada a mi vida vikinga eh, hace 900 años. Yo comenté que uno de los mensajes que recibí en la ayahuasca fue que tenía que ir a, tenía que ir a, eh, al Polo Norte, eh, pero que antes de llegar al Polo Norte tenía que eh, incorporar, eh, tenía que ir a Valhalla. Cuando dije esto, él me dice, mi casa se llama Valhalla. Entonces, des, eh, entonces decidí que tenía que ir. Obviamente, para allá. Este lugar está muy cerca del lago eh, Salado, en, en Utah, que para mí representa la corona del Padre Sabio de México. Entonces me hizo, me hizo lógica ¿no? tener que ir ahí. Um, la cuestión es que en ese momento, eh, eh, en ese momento me lleva a dar una vuelta alrededor de la casa, me muestra una piedra, y, eh, y en esta piedra había, eh, bueno, era una piedra que se había caído de la montaña, que estaba ahí fija, y me dijo, para mí esta piedra es muy especial, eh, me gustaría saber qué sentís de ella. Um, entonces fui, eh, toqué la piedra y en ese instante eh, me pasó algo que nunca había sentido en mi vida, que de repente empecé a sentir o a canalizar a, una, a un hombre hormiga, o sea, una, una, perso una persona que tenía parecido cuerpo humano, pero con la cabeza de una hormiga. Um, y la persona hormiga, el hombre hormiga, dijo algo concreto, que fue, eh, eh, el 2 de febrero de 2024, las puertas se van a abrir. No te lo pierdas. Y cuando dijo eso, levantó una piedra y había un nido de hormigas que estaban llevando todos huevos. Y entonces dijo, pero antes de ir a la puerta de la hormiga, um, tienes que eh, encontrar las 144 runas que están dentro de los huevos en los templos de la humanidad escondidos debajo de la tierra. Um, entonces dijimos, bueno, eh, eh, quedó ahí el mensaje, se terminó el mensaje, y unas horas después una amiga que tenemos en común, Frida, eh, apareció, en la, en, apareció ahí en la, en la casa, y le contamos lo que habíamos recibido. Y cuando lo contamos, eh, me, nos dice, la puerta de la hormiga en Sedona es Palatki, la puerta roja. No tenía ni idea de que existía una puerta con un hombre hormiga cavado, en la, cavado ahí. Y... Pero esto pasó hace mucho tiempo. Entonces, eh, lo fuimos como dejando y nos dijimos, bueno, tenemos que juntarnos ese día, 2 de febrero. Um, así que planificamos nuestro viaje para estar aquí hoy. Lo que no sabía, que luego nos contó Frida, es que ella tiene una maestra, Marsa, eh, que es la custodia de esa puerta y que la cuida junto con los Hopi y que todos los 2 de febrero hacen encuentros 
para meditar frente a la puerta. Cada vez que están con esas meditaciones, la puerta se abre un poquito más. Eh, y la razón por la cual el 2 de febrero es porque es el punto medio, la puerta, entre el solsticio de diciembre y el equinoccio eh, de marzo. Por lo tanto, ya había otra, otro mensaje importante ahí. Este diciembre, el 21 de diciembre, durante el solsticio, yo estaba en Egipto y eh, cuando con el grupo que estaba íbamos a entrar a la gran pirámide eh, para la ceremonia final de, 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 del solsticio, antes de que nosotros entráramos sale un pequeño grupo de personas y ese pequeño grupo de personas eran de Damanhur. Damanhur es un lugar en Italia, cerca de Torino. Eh, que se llama así en, en nombre al eh, templo de la luz de Horus, que está en el delta del Nilo. Uh, entonces sale eh, Crótalo, eh, que es un representante internacional de Damanhur, que significa, eh, el nombre de Crótalo es, eh, ¿cómo se dice en español? Eh, cascabel, la serpiente de Cascabel. Eh, y sale y me dice, Matías, te queríamos invitar a que vengas a Damanhur, y digo, sí, ¿cuándo? Va? Bueno, en, en enero puede ser, en enero, sí, perfecto, vamos en enero. Um, toda la información que yo venía recibiendo hasta ese momento tenía que ver con eh, reparar el tiempo, había algo en el tiempo que teníamos que reparar, historias que ya voy a ir contando. Eh, entonces teníamos, tenía que ser, vamos a reparar el tiempo, eh, eso era dentro de la pirámide, eh, corregir algo que estaba roto en el tiempo. En resumidas cuentas, llegamos allí eh, y nos reciben diciéndonos que llegamos ahí el 9 de enero para hacer una actividad el 10. Era solo una visita desde mi punto de vista. Um, y, y en eso, esa semana me escribe Navin eh, y me dice, hey, en un mes... Es lo, lo de Sedona. Eh, necesitamos ir a los templos estos a buscar la información. Necesitamos encontrar cuáles son las runas. Eh, y entonces le dijo, bueno, ve, vente a Torino y hablamos ahí y, y nos reunimos y hablamos sobre qué, qué es lo que puede ser. Entonces vino a Torino y en ese momento lo que nos damos cuenta es que Damanhur son los templos de la humanidad que fueron cavados debajo de la tierra. Um, cuando llegamos, tuvimos una reunión con las personas de Damanhur uh, y, y dijo, uh, eh, estábamos eh, con, con las personas de Damanhur y dicen, eh, es increíble que hayas venido en este momento porque eh, la persona que fundó Damanhur, que ya hace años falleció, <coughs> Durante su vida dejó muchas cartas para abrir en fechas específicas. Y había dejado una carta para el día 10 de enero de 2024. Entonces, eh, la carta lo que decía era que ese día había que hacer una tarea específica relacionada a corregir o arreglar el tiempo. Por lo tanto, obviamente, las puertas de Damanhur se nos abrieron para poder hacer esta tarea. Um, hicimos esta, eh, nos llevaron a una cámara, concretamente, la cámara del agua, y cuando llegamos ahí, lo que vemos es una cámara que está toda pintada por el mismo fundador de Damanhur, um, donde hay todos huevos en la pared que tienen runas, que no pertenecen a ninguna cultura, que, estaban, que están escritos en toda la pared, conectados por... Eh, corrientes eléctricas, positivo o negativo, eh, y, y entre medio escritos códigos y nombres de dioses egipcios y nombres de dioses hindúes. Otra información que veníamos trabajando, obviamente, Navin, India, yo trayéndolo de Egipto. Um, entonces hicimos nuestra, nuestra activación ahí, ingresamos a la información. Eh, 
que los datos lo, los voy a compartir después, los voy a, lo, prefiero escribirlo para no perder eh, la información. Um, <coughs> hicimos nuestra tarea y acá estamos ahora con la información que recolectamos debajo de la tierra. Eh, ah, perdón, un, un último detalle, que en una de las cámaras que estaba todo pintado y que normalmente la gente no va todavía, eh, lo último que encontramos pintado en la pared es un montón de hormigas que escriben yo soy. O sea, todas las hormigas de un hormiguero salían pintadas y escriben yo soy. En italiano, obviamente, yo son. Um, fue la confirmación de que, te, de que ahí estaban los huevos. <risa> um, entonces, eh, tomamos esa información uh, y una de las cosas interesantes fue que Crótalo nos dice, no sé por qué, éramos cuatro, éramos cuatro amigos ahí, eh, y nos dice, no sé por qué, pero siento que les tengo que dar algo para que utilicen durante estos días, eh, y es algo que compré hace muchos años y no sé por qué lo compré, y son cuatro anillos vikingos de hace 900 años. <ríe> es decir, la misma historia que nos conectó eh, a Navin y a mí eh, eh, en el principio de 2023. Así que por eso utilizamos las runas y los anillos vikingos durante la activación. <coughs> um, como para cerrar esa historia. Um, bueno, esa fue una, esto es un resumen, eh, porque ahora en poquito nos tenemos que ir y nos vamos a ir a la puerta. Ahora vamos a ir a la puerta. Y esto me recuerda a lo primero que les conté, um, que les dije, el 2 de febrero de 2020 abrimos la puerta del tiempo para que el 2, para que el 22 de febrero de 2020 22, se abriera la otra puerta, que es la, la puerta del espacio. Bueno, aquí en Palatki hay dos puertas, una de un lado, la otra del otro lado, con unas cinco millas de diferencia. <coughs> por una se ingresa algo, tiempo, por la otra espacio. Um, y supuestamente hoy se abre una puerta para todos nosotros. Um, pero quería compartirles esto antes de ir a la puerta para que todos estemos en resonancia porque siempre hemos trabajado en los portales. Um, hemos sido estas hormiguitas de la conciencia. ¿no? Um, como dije, esto es una, es una puerta que no sabemos muy bien hacia qué, pero tiene que ver con todos los portales de la Tierra. Y con esto quería decir algo. Podemos, vamos a escuchar un montón de cosas sobre portales. Hay portales de oscuridad, portales de luz, portales que no se pueden abrir, portales... Hay un montón de cosas. La verdad es que un portal es una puerta. ¿sí? Es una puerta en una casa, en una habitación. Son puertas. ¿sí? Eh, solo puede ingresar o salir lo que nosotros permitimos ingresar y salir. Pero si las puertas están siempre cerradas, habrán escuchado esas cosas. Esas, esas frases, ¿no? Hay que abrir puertas en la vida, porque si estamos con nuestras puertas cerradas, nunca vamos a recibir lo nuevo que esperamos. Si nosotros tenemos miedo a las puertas, entonces vamos a saber qué pasa afuera. Um, y por lo tanto, todas estas historias no estarían pasando.
20, I started to make videos. I would always write the script. I would hire a voice artist, you know, I put a lot of effort into it. I don't do that anymore. But I made this video and this video led me to being able to participate in this sacred ceremony on the 2nd of February in Sedona with the Hopi people. And I will explain that. And so when I made this video in 2020, I got immediately contacted by a woman. Her name is Marza who is deeply connected to the Hopi people. And we have been in touch ever since. Marza uh, has an interesting story where her father in Sedona, when he was a little kid, somewhere after the year 1900, was adopted by the native people because he lost his white parents. And so he grew up with the native people. And so Marza is allowed to actually still visit with the Hopi people in a very, I would say, private way. And to also visit places on the Hopi land in Arizona that normally are not open to anyone, not to anyone who's not of the Hopi tribe. And so um, a few really days ago, before February 2nd, I was texting with Marza and she told me she is going to Sedona with a group of people where they will be meeting with the Hopi people. And it was not a public event. And she said that they have a task and the task was to activate a front door and a back door. And she gave me some more information about it. The funny thing is, if you guys know Matthias De Stefano, uh, I put his picture also in the email that I sent, that Matthias was told by his guides uh, that he had to be in Sedona to open some doors. And somehow people connected him to Marza. And so he was also invited to participate to be, uh, yeah, he has a show on Gaia. So it happened to be that we ended up both as participants of Marza's gathering with the Hopi people. And we had other native people there as well, but also Marza's students. And so I started to receive dreams and instructions about what's going to happen in Sedona. And I was visited every night before the 2nd of February by the Hopi people, mainly women. And they were giving me instructions and they were giving me a map and they were telling me about the front door, the back door and the energy. And so if you have been to Sedona, Sedona is a very hard opening portal to the new earth. Now, I have known since 2020, uh, since different information came to me from the Hopi people, that Sedona actually is exactly what it is. It's a portal. And that Sedona, if you've been, it's beautiful, but it also exists in higher realms. And we would call it the new earth. So you will find the same Sedona, but without the homes and without the infrastructure, of course, as pure nature on the new earth. So as I started to receive all the information, I was always making little drawings and I got so excited that I am actually able to participate and that Marza would take me with her to Sedona, uh, to the hidden you know, portals and to the Hopi land. So what unfolded was pretty incredible. I knew from my Hopi grandmother from the stars that the key to all things in this lifetime is to have a clean heart. Now, this is what the Hopi people actually spoke about to us as well. The clean heart versus unclean heart. Now, when I was four years old, my initiation was all about in this lifetime, we need to actually purify our hearts 
to once again reunite our life. The Hopi people took us to something that is, again, not open to public at all. They took us to their prophecy rock. And the prophecy rock has all the stories as uh, petroglyphs um, written onto it. And it is about what happens when the heart becomes unclean and how it leads to complete, you know, eventually destruction of a world because it leads to the distortion of human love and humanity. So they took us to these amazing places. And I wanted to point out that the Hopi people have always been guided by these supernatural beings from higher realms that they themselves call Kachinas. Now, I always thought, you know, Kachinas, they seem to have kind of like masks on their faces. But when I was in Sedona in 2021, I got actually visited by the Kachinas themselves. And again, they showed me what's happening to planet Earth. And so, you know, deep down, we have this DNA that leads us to these uh, origins. So we are always connected to our star origin. And for us, that would be the Hopi people here that I share about. And so the Kachinas have been very, very active in actually assisting the Earth to ascend. And so the Earth has been ascending into more and more and more light. We are now in a world where we are receiving so much more light. Now I'm skipping here a little bit through the slides, so please forgive me. When the Hopi people visited me, these women, a few nights ago before going to Sedona for the second of the second, they gave me this kind of map and they asked me to draw it, so I did. So I'll explain it. <laughs> so they said there is door one, the first door, the first portal, and behind it is the second door, the second portal. And the flow between these portals, portals to the new earth, is actually only partially liberated. But in the middle, you see there was like a big chunk. I have the infinity symbol on it. And this flow has been completely frozen. So this is not the first time that we receive instructions about frozen flow, frozen energy. Same thing happened in Ohio at the Serpent Mound. And so they showed me how actually our presence will be absolutely needed. And they specifically told me several days before going to Sedona that I needed to be at the back door. And the back door is the second door. Because there was a being who has been trying to fix the second portal. And you see it needed two different fixes. It was broken in two different places. And so I spoke to the being who told me this. And it was a male being who was working in the ethers and he's just haven't, he didn't have enough success in fixing this. But these Hopi women showed me how this can be fixed. And so I knew I have to be at the back door, but it was Marza that was deciding who's going to be at which door. It was about 34 of us in total. And so I was hoping that I'm going to be at the back door. They showed me how the flow between the two doors, actually, because it's frozen, needs to be defrosted by the fire of like the burning fire of spirit that actually can be ignited at the base of the spine if we move in the infinity symbol. Now, for you who have been you know, following these teachings for a while, you know how Divine Mother in 2020 gave us a transmission of how to activate through the infinity symbol at the base of the spine. So all of this was delivered before going to Sedona. So when we arrived in Sedona, it was quite miraculous. Uh, I just made this little diagram to explain this. We met with the Hopi people and the Hopi people talked about the back door as Honanki and the front door as Palatki. Now, these, it was raining so much the day we arrived. It even started to snow. And the back door and the front door, they are about, I would say, maybe at least an hour, you know, four-wheel drive in the mud. So we had to drive through roads that they were not even roads. You know, you just had to drive through the mud. It was really crazy. But we did it. So Marza told me that I'm going to be at the front door and Matthias was going to be at the front door. So I was at the back door, sorry, back door, and he was going to be at the front door. So they split us in two halves. And so um, I was driving to the back door and just praying that we can make it through the mud because it was really not easy. So um, we ended up at the back door and we started to meditate. And then the people at the front door, you know, it was so far away from each other, you couldn't see anything. But um, what we saw was this this is where the back door is 
And what happened as we started to meditate was pretty incredible. I don't think I have a picture here, but again, I put it in the photos. It is um, a rainbow started to rise from this mountain. And that was quite incredible. It would just be rainbow light. I actually want to see if I have the picture here because I would love for you to see it, but I forgot to put it in the slides. Let me quickly look if you don't mind. It just was so magical. I'm going to look in a moment. I cannot find it right now. But as we were meditating uh, and I was just doing what I knew from the Hopi people to do, I was following exactly the instructions. I was just, you know, activating the fire within the spine, fixing what I would call the back door with the two fixes that I was told that we could do. Then the rainbow just started to rise from this rock here at the back door. And I started to receive uh, transmissions that were like super clear and loud in the head. And this is what I think is the most important part of today's transmission. I just wanted to put it into context. So as we were meditating there, you know, it was pouring, it was snowing, it was so uncomfortable. I took my shoes off because that's what we do, right? When we want to connect with the earth. And I wanted to show you also the front door. So Serena, I don't know if she's here on the call. She sent me what Matthias posted on Instagram from the front door. So I'll play it. Yeah in different places but again this is the solar calendar you could see the markings um if you watch the zoom video you will see this i put the filter on for it so you'll see the layers after layers after layers um it looks like casper the ghost not <laughs> this is the threshold guardian so here we are talking about the energy and layers of time and we're, we've got a threshold. So yeah, Romina, thank you. You posted the picture of the rainbow rising. That's amazing because that's what happened. Suddenly as we were meditating, you know, the rainbow appeared in front of the rock, the back door. And so I was receiving so much information at the back door as this was liberated. It was pretty incredible. So again, you know, everybody wanted to be at the front door, but I thought, you know, I knew that it's the back door that actually holds the key. And so the back door had to defrost the energy, had to liberate the energy, and it had to connect the infinity symbol between the front and the back. And it had to be down through the fire at the base of the spine, the true burning volcano that Divine Mother has been speaking about for so long. It's really incredible. And so this is what I received. And I would say this is the really breakthrough information of what happened on the 2nd of February. 